Hey guys, Simon here with the Caddis Fly Shop and Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. And today I'm tying for you a Jig March Brown Nymph. Um, this thing smashes. It has a lot of weight in it. Uh, it's got that wide body like a crawler has. Um, and the March Brown's got a big old wing case because those wing cases are super developed on the nymphs that they're eating right now. So this thing works super, super good right now. Um, it's kind of a different tie. There's a couple of steps, but I'll walk you guys through it and kind of go slow. There's some extra steps to get this real wide tapered body like those crawler nymphs. And uh, if we're talking about what's most important for flies, it's the profile. So we'll get to it and I'll show you how to do it. So for the tail, we're doing pheasant tail fibers. Uh, this is just tubing for the body uh, wire. But the way we got this body so wide is by using lead wire. Um, and making the whole body wide and um, especially with these crawler nymphs the profile is so important to make it real wide uh, there's a pine squirrel and just elk hair for the legs and uh, standard wing case so it's not too hard there's just a couple steps to kind of prep it to get that profile but we will uh, do it slowly so you guys can figure it out so this is a fulling mill jig for short um, fm 5125 is the hook which looks like this uh, it's been kind of my favorite hook lately if you've been following the videos uh, you're gonna be happy because you probably have this one at home um, it's really good it's short shank wide gap um, you can put a mega bead on it this bead is a five of 30 seconds slotted tungsten bead uh, so this is Semperfly nano silk brown 50 denier best thread ever for this reason, I'm just hitting that hook point and it's not breaking. It's crazy good. Um, this is a 5.30 seconds mottled brown bead from Hairline. And this is the fully mill jig for short. Uh, if you watch other videos, you'll see that um, you, you'll recognize this hook and probably already have it. Um, so it's one of my favorite ones right now. It's really, really good. And so, like I was saying before, to make this really wide profile, we need to take a piece of 0.3 lead or lead free wire. So this is 0.3 lead wire. You can use lead, lead free if you want. But this is probably the hardest part on the whole fly. Basically we're trying to create a wide profile so you're going to lightly pinch this in here. Um, super glue helps, zappa gap, loctite, whatever you have um, helps a lot. And so going to once you have it looking like this um, you can put a little dot of loctite on which helps secure it before you put the other side on um, like I said this is the hardest part another reason why I like this thread you can just pull and pop and then we're gonna do the same thing here and this adds weight so for spring flows it's your friend and uh, it just makes a really nice profile. And again, very light to start here till you get back where you need. Make sure it's not going anywhere. And then you pop it and see, you can see that wide profile now. And we're gonna do the same thing behind that, one size down, or I guess two sizes down with 0.2. Now, same thing back here. We're just going to tie it in here. Just like that and pop it. And on this side too, same thing. You can't use too hard of pressure because then you, it skips along the side of the body. Basically, what we're doing right now is we're creating this realistic nymph taper right here and this real flat body that these crawlers have. Boom. So now we have that pheasant tail. Um, you can put it in before. I generally put it in before. I just we had to cut the video and I forgot, but we're going to take a couple of fibers here and tie them in after the fact. Just like this. And it still works doing it after. I was worried there for a sec. 
Yep, and we're gonna kind of tie them in, splay them out a little bit for the tail. And there's that. Uh, to secure this whole thing so it doesn't move, just to be safe, I like to put a little dot of Zappa Gap, Loctite, whatever you got. I like Loctite because Zappa Gap, the caps always get stuck on me. Um, but here's that profile you're looking for. When you look at it, it's, it's wider now. And when we put the ribbing on, it's going to be wide again. So I'm going to take a little bit of soft wire small, old. We're going to tie a little bit in. There's a couple ways you can do it. I like to kind of put it on the side if there's a spot I need to fill in for the body to kind of be flush. You can do it down the back and top, whatever. But their bodies are flat and squished and wide. So just think every material you put on adds bulk somewhere. So uh, this I like to just put down the top and a trick to make it take up less space is you pull it tight and it lies flatter. So now we got that in. So now we are going to wrap this up just like this. And so to work our way up the fly here. I'll show you in a sec that nice wide profile we were going for. It looks great. Got a little bit of segmentation here going to happen with the uh, wire. I should do one wrap towards the uh, in the hook bend, and then I like to just hop in every segment. It makes it really easy to stay kind of uniform with your wraps. And here, this is what I'm going to show you guys what we're going for. What we achieved, pretty good. Um, that is this, this wide profile here is what we want. Um, and so you can see it's pretty wide. We're going to tie in a little bit of cinnamon tip turkey for the wing case. If you want, you could use a uh, pheasant tail. I like this just because it's easy to get it real wide. You don't need to put a ton in. And then um, we are going to tie in some pine squirrel right here. This is the Hairline Zirconia Dubbing Rake, Ceramic Rake. And this is a pine squirrel skin. Um, this is really important for any dubbed skin and you want to pull the dubbing out. This rake is like the best. And that's because there's two different types of hair in all of this. There's down here is where the dubbing is. And then these are called guard hairs. And so this fur under the skin insulates the, the animal. And then this kind of guards that insulation from getting torn up. And really what dubs the best is that under fur. And this pulls it out with ease. So we'll do a video on the future on a hare's ear. Um, on a hare's ear, you use this, the guard hair is the tail. And you use the dubbing to dub the body. And this is a great tool to separate it. It can be used on muskrat, mole, rabbit, squirrel pretty much anything with fur you can use it on so uh that's your little tutorial of how to do it you rake it like this and the harder you rake the more guard hairs you get so if you want spikier dubbing if you rake really hard it's going to get really spiky so we're going to take a little bit of that dubbing that we took you don't need a whole lot and we are going to wrap it in and keep in mind we're pulling this wing case forward so you, you don't need to really bump the fur all the way to the back we don't want too much of it in there, but you could tell it's kind of spiky. And if I brush it out, it's even spikier. Um, I don't just because it's just going to get chewed up by the fish. So I don't, I just know I don't need to do a whole lot with it. But it has the potential as it gets fished to get spikier and spikier. Uh, last things we have to put on are these legs. So we're going to hair stack some uh, brown elf, this stuff right here. Um, and you're going to take a pinch about that big. Uh, and you're going to pull some out of it because you really don't need that much. So uh, either stack less or just pull a little bit out. That's a little bit better. And there's a trick to getting this in. So I'm going to kind of try to reach around the vise and not block the view here. You're going to pinch it in here. Very light. And you can tell it's way too long. And the trick is, is you bump it and then retighten. And bump and retighten. And that's how you can shorten up the legs. And then when you pull it, they splay out. And so that's kind of what we want the legs to look like on one side. 
uh, you want to make sure that they stay sticking out to the side. And so if they need a little help coming back up, you can help them. That's what you want to keep that kind of crawler profile. And then we're going to take another stock of hair, run it through the hair stocker. Thin it out a little bit, or if you just grab the right amount, it's a little bit less wasteful. So we've got our hair door stacker. We're going to pull some out just because we don't need quite that much. Same thing here on this side. Loosely guide it in. Make sure you're on the side, not on the bottom. Bump, bump, bump. Shorten it up. Try to make them even on both sides. Then cinch her down. Straighten them out if you need. That looks good to me. You can see that well, the profile we're going for. Um, and now I will snip this excess off. Snip this. And... Now that that's all cleaned up, we'll pull this wing case over and you, we are done. Um, I'll just put a little bit of resin for durability to make that wing case pop. So first, I will whip finish. And this is the last time you have to kind of straighten things out if you need with these legs. You can kind of re-guide them and if you whip finish it'll help straighten them out where you want them. So a couple whip finishes and you're set. Uh, solar is bone dry here on the back first. This is what's going to be knocking along the bottom so it might need a little help. And while I'm at it I'll put a little on the sides where the hair is in so that doesn't get knocked out. I'll put a thin layer on the top first and then you guys don't see me use this very often, but this is uh, solar as medium for the wing case. Especially important just because this is these nymphs are mature. Their wing cases are pretty much exploding with their wings inside. And um, just what a mature nymph looks like. So to best capture that, we're going to put a little bit of this um, solar as medium on. I could get some out of my bottle. I hope I yeah, just need just a drop like that. And it'll kind of set like that. That'll also hold the wraps in. Um, if you put flash in, it acts as like a magnifying glass and it makes the whole thing kind of glow. It's really cool. But there, now you got are your wing case here. You got cure the resin on the bottom. Um, this is a great, great crawler pattern. Uh, it's been working really good for me lately. The, uh, you can use it for other crawler nymph species, whether you have to change the color or size or whatever you have to do. But uh, yeah. it works great. Uh, you can get everything at caddisflyshop.com. Full write-up on organflyfishingblog.com. Thanks, guys.